Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome to something very different for the channel. This is A Game of Thrones, the board game. Now I know a lot of people have opinions about Game of Thrones, mostly because for a lot of people, their first exposure into this fantasy world was through a very popular HBO TV series. And that series left people feeling a little disappointed. But before there was a TV show, there was a board game based on the books. And this is a digital edition of that board game. It is not associated with the HBO show at all. This is created by Asmodee Digital, who has done tabletop ports before, and we've seen those on the channel. And they're actually sponsoring today's video so a big thank you to them for that. Now this game's actually been out on Steam for a little while. The reason we're getting to do a video on this today is because Asmodee is celebrating the release of the first expansion for the game, and it is called A Dance with Dragons. This is also based on the expansion for the tabletop game. I'm gonna show off this expansion for the most of this video, but before we jump into this, because it is a little action-packed right from the beginning, I'm gonna play a couple of rounds of the base game first, and just kind of introduce you to some of the mechanics and the rules, just so you don't feel lost. So let's go ahead and play as, let's say, the Starks to start us off, and we are going to play a game of Thrones to try and take over all of Westeros. And that is kind of the premise of the game. We are playing as one of six houses that are vying for control of the Iron Throne and all of Westeros. The way that we are going to win the game is by controlling castles on the map. In a lot of ways, this looks a little bit like a game of Risk. We're going to move some pawns around, fight other players, consolidate our power, and try to take over important areas, right? Whoever can control the most castles by the end of 10 rounds, which doesn't sound like a lot, is going to win the game. If any player can conquer a full seven castles at any given time, they just win the game outright. All right, and we want to do that if at all possible. Now, the game is broken up into three distinct phases. It is not broken up by turn. We don't have one person take all their actions and then the next and then the next until we have 10 full rounds. Rather, all players are gonna take their turns at the same time in phases. They're gonna write down what their orders are going to be for their individual units, and then we are all going to take the action phase and actually show how that plays out. So let me start with the planning phase and I will show you guys what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at the Shivering Sea, for example. I have a ship here, and I know that the Narrow Sea is going to be a crucial point for me because I want to be able to support my units from the sea. So we're gonna take this ship right here, and we're gonna use a very powerful march order to move directly out of the Shivering Sea and into the Narrow Sea. Hopefully, the Baratheons don't decide to move up to the north. They probably will not, but if we go there, I wanna fight and have a good chance at winning. We're also going to go to White Harbor over here. We're going to use a smaller march order to move into Widow's March next time. And in Winterfell, we'll use a regular march order. Now, I only have units on three territories on the board, so I only can do three actions in total right now. But there are other things we could do. We could consolidate power to gain a resource called power. We could raid in order to interrupt other people's actions or perhaps steal power. We could defend so that we have extra strength if someone attacks me. Or we can play support so that we can add our strength to any adjacent combats. I will get to a lot of these later. For now, it's more important that I get into some territories and start consolidating my position so that we can ramp up in power a little faster. So that's all I can do at the very start. Once we have lots of units on the board, you can imagine this is gonna get a lot more complicated. So we'll start here, make sure we have this, and then we're gonna go ahead and move on. Now we're gonna go to the action phase, and this is where everyone is going to reveal all of their chosen actions, and we're gonna take turns in playing these out. So all the orders are getting revealed right now. It's going to start with, I think, the Lannisters or the Baratheons. Yeah, the Lannisters are choosing to raid some people first. Nothing to do there. Now the Baratheons are going to make their move into the Reach and take over this fort. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Everyone wants to get as many castles as possible. Lannister's taken a couple territories. Now it's my turn. I'm going to go ahead and move into the Narrow Sea with this ship to make sure I take it because this is absolutely crucial for House Stark to hold. If we ever lose this, we're going to find ourselves in a really, really big uh, bunch of trouble. Now the Martells get to make their move, etc. In just a moment, I imagine we're going to get to see some combat as people start fighting against each other. Looks like the Greyjoys are moving in a Sea Guard and a River Run to go and fight against the Lannisters. Okay. The way this is going to work is there are a couple of different types of pawns on the game. There are horses, which represent two strength, and there are footmen, which represents only one strength. At the beginning, you would have seen that House Greyjoy had two strength versus one for Lannisters. After that is done, then it decides if we have any support actions, they are going to add their strength onto that. Then, each house is going to play a card from their hand. 
and these cards represent different characters who work for the house. In this case, the Greyjoys really overcommitted and used Urine Crow's Eye to add on four extra strength. Four plus two is six, that's why they have six here. The Lannisters used the Hound in order to get up to a strength of three. As a result, six versus three, the Greyjoys win, the Lannisters are going to have to retreat. There are some special abilities with some of these cards which can be very powerful, and knowing when to play these cards is crucial. In this case, Euron has a sword icon, which means if they win the combat, they would inflict a casualty on one of the enemy units, not simply letting them all retreat. That can be good if you want to weaken your opponent. The Hound, however, has two towers, which would have preserved two lives. So in this case, I think the Lannisters are going to lose nothing except for the territory itself. So they're going to retreat. Yep, just like so, and the Greyjoys take over Riverrun. Okay, makes sense. Looks like the Tyrells are looking to do the exact same thing to the Reach. So it is two versus one. Now they're going to play their cards, Marjorie versus Brienne. It's actually a tie in this case. So this is interesting. This comes down to a new mechanic um, called Fiefdom which I will explain in just a little bit. Understand for now that the Tyrells win the tiebreaker, all right? So they would not have lost any troops in this case because they had a tower, but it doesn't matter, they won. Brienne is going to defend one of them, so they're probably just going to retreat just as before. So the Baratheons lose nothing, they're going to retreat over here to the bone leg. Okay, and Tyrell takes over the Reach. Looks like the Baratheons are moving into Blackwater Bay just off of King's Landing, which is a pretty sensible play. Lannister is moving into Harrenhal, and now it is my turn. Before the Greyjoys can move into Moat Kaelin, I'm going to go ahead and move there myself. Let's take our horsemen so they're nice and strong, move into the castle. And I don't have to commit all my troops into this, I just have to move my troops out of this region, as many as I want. I'm going to take this soldier and move them up to Castle Black, because there's a little power icon right there, which is going to make it easier for me to harvest power. And I'll show you why that's all important a little bit later. For now, that's all I can do with these units. Now we see what the Greyjoys do, they're moving into Flint's Finger, makes sense. Okay, then the Tyrells, it looks like, get to make their move. They're going to go back to Old Town and hold on to their castle. Okay, my turn. I'm going to move into Widow's Watch and take over this supply point. I'll explain more about that in a little bit. And now that we have left White Harbor, we have no garrison. If you don't have a garrison, you would lose control of this unless you're prepared to spend one power to keep control. This is a castle and a port. It's important. I want to keep it. So yes, we are going to say we are going to do that. Okay. Let's see. Anyone else? Looks like everyone's going to take some other special orders to muster some extra troops. I can explain more about that later. Now we have left the action phase. This moves us on into the third phase of the game, which is the Westeros phase. And there's a random set of cards that are going to be drawn. We have to play these out in order. In this case, we have a Throne of Blades. The holder of the Iron Throne chooses one of the following. Everyone has to update their supply and then reconcile their armies. Everyone gets to muster a unit or the card has no effect. What do they choose? Looks like they chose no effect. They didn't want to give everyone else extra soldiers. Makes sense. The second card is going to be a Clash of Kings. Now, this is going to lead into something called Influence Tracks, which actually comes down to that tiebreaker and stuff I was talking about before. So this is where we get to do some bidding. So there are three different Influence Tracks that we have to track at the beginning of the game. There's Iron Throne, so whoever wins this bid will sit on the Iron Throne, and there's powers that come with this. The player at the top of the track gets to break all ties, decide the tiebreakers that occur outside of combat. So let's suppose two people bid... Uh, an even amount on the next one. Whoever sits on the Iron Throne gets to decide which of the two will win the next bid, etc. There's a few different cases where that comes into play. I'm not really that excited about this, but it does also determine your turn order. Whoever go, uh, wins this gets to go first, and then whoever's on number six is the last player to get to go in a round. I might bid just one, but I think I'm going to accept maybe being on the bottom end here, and we're not going to spend any of our power. We only have so much power to go around, and I want to save this for a more consequential bid. Looks like not a lot of people decided to go for this, so right now Baratheon is probably going to win this one. They take the Iron Throne, which makes sense, and this is going to end up being the turn order. Now we move on to something called fiefdoms. Fiefdoms determine who will win a tie in combat. As we saw earlier, the Tyrells won a fight against the Baratheons, which tells you they were higher on the fiefdom track than the Baratheons were. That's why they won. Whoever wins at the top of this also gets something called Valyrian Steel, which means in one round, or every round, they get to use the Steel Blade one time to add an extra strength in combat. Could be nice 
in some tiebreakers. So uh, this, this can be pretty strong. I'm not worried about this too much either. I might spend just one so I can win some tiebreakers, but I'm not going to commit too much. Interestingly, not a lot of people wanted to do that, so it looks like I get to take position number two. The Martells get the Valyrian Steel. Then we move on to what is arguably the most important of all of them, and it is King's Court. Whoever has the highest position in King's Court gets extra stars. These stars determine if you get to use some of the more powerful orders for your units. So this is one actually worth bidding a little bit more on. I want to save at least one power, always. But we'll bid two and see where things stand. It looks like I win, actually. So because I win, I also get something called the Messenger Raven ability, which lets me either swap an order after everyone has revealed it. So let's say someone's moving into a place I wish I was defending and I would regret my decision. We can change one of those orders, or maybe we decide, you know what? Turns out they're not going anywhere. Maybe we want to just go ahead and attack. We can figure that out later. Or we can use the Messenger Raven to determine if the Wildlings are going to make some progress. And that leads to another fun little thing right up here at the top. This is Wildling Strength. As the Wildling across the wall up here gain power, they are going to then attack, and depending on their strength, we need a combined amount of uh, power used in order to fend them back. Otherwise, a lot of people are going to take some damage. In this case, we got unlucky, and the Wildling attack card actually was drawn. Sometimes this waits really late into the game to happen. So they're attacking. Now everyone has to bid some of their power in order to fight them back. I'm going to take the risk and spend my last power to make sure, at the very least, we are not the lowest paying member. Otherwise, we would probably suffer the brunt of the damage if the Wildlings do break through. Okay, it looks like the Night's Watch definitely won. The uh, Greyjoys and the Lannisters were enough to fight that back. Because the uh, Lannisters were the highest bidder, or rather, the they tied with the Greyjoys, I suppose the Baratheons broke the tie. They get an extra bonus. I'm not too worried about that. All right, and that's how it works with one simple phase. Now, the other orders to worry about would include things like Consolidate Power. If, for example, over here, I wanted to use the Consolidate Power um, ability right here, what we could do is gain some extra power uh, next turn, and you get one extra for every crown on that tile. So in this case, by using it here, if we use this ability, we would be able to get two power for the next round. Having lots of power can be helpful because you never know when you're going to get to bid on some more influence. It's also why King's Landing is extra strong for consolidating because there's two crowns there. Whoever holds that can start getting loads of power. It's a very, very important resource. Other abilities would include raiding. So this is a way of removing someone's uh, orders, an adjacent enemy's support, consolidate power, or raid order. If an enemy is using uh, consolidate power, you actually steal the power from them instead. So this can be pretty nice for us. We also have the defense. So if someone's attacking me, I get an extra plus one strength. Now you know why that's important. But with a star, you can see right here, we would get plus two strength. And this is why the stars can be really good. And then finally, support order. Having a starred plus one means means that this ship right here could uh, lend their combat ability to any of these coastal fights as many times as we need to during that round, and supporting units cannot be killed, right? So if we had to defend both Moat Kalen and Widow's Watch this turn, we could get an extra, let's say, plus one, and that would actually make it so that we could get uh, extra strength in both combat. Supporting is really strong in this game. In this case, I'm going to go for a raid order. Those get processed first. You, I think, we're probably going to keep in place. Now, the question is, do we consolidate power or do we try to defend? It depends a lot on what we think that the Greyjoys are going to do. They only have one area here that they can attack me from. If they're going to raid, I could lose a power, but I'm going to take the risk and hope that they plan on moving or something instead. So we're going to consolidate power up over there, and in Widow's Watch, we're going to do a move order, and I'm going to leave Widow's Watch and go over to the Twins right over here. Because we control the sea zone, we can move across over here into the Twins, right? That's the premise of how the game works. Now, in a solo game against the AI, this is pretty straightforward, right? It's 10 turns to basically out-strategize the AI, maybe set up some alliances. We can actually do things like that, propose some alliances to people, see what packs that they're setting up, and so on. Where this game gets really insane is multiplayer. Imagine six people all talking to each other, making secret bargains and alliances, and backstabbing each other at the worst possible moments in order to gain some power, right? This game can be insane, and that's why I say it's a lot like Diplomacy. It seems like it should be really fast at only 10 rounds, but I would not be surprised if a really competitive game of a Game of Thrones could be a three to four hour ordeal, right? 
So pretty insane for us. In the meantime, though, I think this is enough to just show off at least the rules. Now I want to go ahead and move on into the expansion Dance with Dragons. Now it's very similar in concept, but it moves further along in the timeline. Spoiler alert here, this is going to the point where the Starks have already been scattered to the wind, the Boltons are in control of the North, the Baratheons have allied with the Wildlings, the Lannisters are kind of losing some grasp uh, with Cersei in charge, and the Tyrells are going to be making some interesting plays as well, right? So what's going to happen here is it's a new map set up. The houses are going to be in a completely different terrain, different units, etc. So you can see the Baratheons have Castle Black, for example. There are new house cards, new characters to worry about, and only six turns instead of ten. Which basically means <laughs> that uh, we have uh, combat right off the bat. Everyone's going to be fighting each other from the very beginning. It's much faster paced and far higher stakes. Actually, I didn't want to play as the Lannisters. Hang on. I actually want to play as the Tyrells this game. Let me show you them. Okay, much better. The Tyrells are an interesting family in the books. They rely a bit more on diplomacy and intrigue to uh, meet their needs, and they're pretty interesting, I think. Very underappreciated family in the book. They're actually really strong in the expansion Dance of Dragons. They have a pretty good position on the map, and with the right moves can secure some really important positions and win the game kind of early. But it depends a lot on what everyone else is going to do. The first thing I want to do is place a move order here in Crack Claw Point with the intention of moving out of here into Blackwater. By doing so, surrounding King's Landing, so if we attack them, say out of Kingswood, we can kill these units automatically. They'll have nowhere to retreat. And by holding King's Landing, that's a castle and a lot of power and a pretty good defensible location. In the Reach, uh, we can try for a support order and see if we can help in the combat with King's Landing, but I don't know if that's gonna work. Old Town, I think we're going to go for probably a muster, so we have some extra units on hand if you want to. In High Garden, I think I need to do a defense, because the Greyjoys could attack me. Who knows for sure. And in Shipbreaker Bay, I'm going to go for a simple move order into Blackwater Bay, because if I can move a couple of ships in over here, I can just use support orders and protect these three areas for the rest of the game, which is obviously pretty darn good. So we're going to try for that. Okay, everything else here looking sort of okay, I think it is. So one fun thing about the influence position, we're going to get our second uh, our second place for the Iron Throne, which means we have the second movement, so only the Lannisters go before us. But even if they do go against us, we break tiebreakers against them, so that's nice. And we are in the top position for the King's Court. I have the opportunity to change up my Messenger Raven uh, and change one of my tokens every round, depending on uh, what everyone else is doing. So, we're in a pretty good position in the first round. After this, it's everyone's game. Who the heck knows what's going to happen, right? All right, so, uh, they're going to start with letting me change my token. What are we doing over here? Okay, so raiding out of King's Landing means they're going to prevent me from supporting, but they're not using a defense, so that's at least okay. Uh, these guys are raiding. They would have destroyed that anyway, so it's not like it matters. No one can raid me for my crowns here. I don't think we need to change anything. I think this is fine. So let's take a look at the top of the Wildling deck. Mammoth Riders. Lowest bidder destroys three of his units everywhere. Everyone else destroys two units, so you really want to win a Wildling victory if they attack. And the highest bidder, if we win, may retrieve a house card of our choice. That could be pretty strong. So now I know that the result of Mammoth Riders is pretty strong. If they Wildlings attack, we want to make sure we bid enough to win. Uh, at least hopefully. Um, yeah, we're going to keep this on the top of the deck. At least I know what to prepare for if the Wildlings do hit. All right, so now we get to have everyone execute through moves. Raids go first. Martell has to raid. They have no one to raid. King's Landing raided me and got rid of the support order. That's the only thing they could do, so it makes sense. And that's kind of it. Now Lannister makes their move. They're leaving River Run into Lannisport to defend the capital area. Okay. In Crack Claw Point, then we're going to take one unit and move over here. Okay. So that's going to take Blackwater, take some important supply points, and stop them from doing much in King's Landing. And then the Greyjoys are going to move up to Seaguard, which makes sense. It's a castle with a power point. And they're going to go up to Flint's Finger, which also makes sense. So they're taking some castles. Looks like the Boltons are just consolidating down to the south in the central areas. The Baratheons are going to take Widow's Watch away. Interesting. Okay. Now, I haven't explained how supply works. These little barrels down over here. Um, if you are going to have more than one unit 
in a single tile, it takes up a supply point. So uh, basically, you have to have enough points to actually start stacking up large armies and travel together. Otherwise, everyone has to be spread out only one at a time. Heck, you can't even muster new units. So over here in Kingswood, we're going to go ahead and launch the attack against King's Landing. Now, let's take a quick look and see what the Lannisters have for cards. All of them, Sir Jaime Lannister being the strongest with plus four, then Sir Kevon Lannister at plus three. Okay, so we're going to confirm this march. I am going to spend a point to keep control of Kingswood. It's important. So, the highest they can go, then, with no support and defense is six. If we can simply tie with them, we win. So the question is, do I want to play my most powerful card on the ch off chance they play their most powerful card? Or do we play, let's say, um, do we play, let's say, Willis Tyrell? I guess we don't have to play the most powerful. We could just play Randall Tarly, but I don't want to spend this because these are both very powerful. If we play Willis Tyrell, that gets me up to five. If he plays three, we get to five and I win. So as long as he doesn't play Jamie, this wins. I'm taking a risk. It's not Jamie. We didn't spend our most powerful cards. Neither did they, but we win the combat. That's the risk we take every time we play this. You want to save your most powerful cards if you can. It's really helpful if you can do that. All right. So it looks like they're coming to attack me, which is very rude. It's two versus four, apparently. Okay, he adds on plus three. So the question is, what are the Greyjoys going to do? Um, the Greyjoys have plus four as well and a plus three. Highest they can go is nine. Um, I could play... what? This is the question. Do I play my most powerful, or do I simply retreat with the intention of taking this later? And the answer is I think I retreat and take this later. I can retake this using Old Town if I muster. Yeah. We're going to spend our weak card, Paxter Redwin. And simply accept that we're, all, we're definitely going to lose. He's going to kill my unit, I just realized. Crap, we should have actually retreated the unit using some... I don't think I actually had any castles now that I think about it. We could have used the Queen of Thorns, and that would have prevented them from using their swords. So we could have saved ourselves a unit, but I think this is okay. So the Boltons are going to attack the Greyjoys. Uh, they are easily going to win using Walder Frey. So Asha is gone, but she does protect one of these units, so they don't lose much. They're going to treat up over here. Nope, they're going to retreat into the area I want to control. Hmm. All right, this is interesting so far. Not the end of the world, just got to be careful. We're going to see ultimately what the uh, we're going to see what the Greyjoys do. The Greyjoys are the ones who are going to mess with me the most, I think. Let's move two of my units into Blackwater Bay. Because again, holding on to this means I can just play support from here. It defends the Shipbreaker Bay and it defends these three territories, which is pretty awesome. So that's all I wanted to do there. Now we're going to go ahead and decide if we want to consolidate power. I'm going to muster a unit here. I'm going to muster, um, what? I could muster a siege engine, which would allow me to... Okay, so I haven't explained this yet. The siege engine is another type of token. It gives you plus four attack if attacking a castle. It gives you no attack for anything else. So it would be good here if I plan on attacking Highgarden and attacking the castle. So that's why I'm going to do it. Everything else is questionable at best. Now we move on to the Westeros phase. Winter is coming, so we immediately shuffle in a new card. Adjust supply. Everyone has to check to make sure their supply is good, otherwise they'd have to get rid of some units. Looks like the Lannisters did just have to get rid of one. Now we're going to bid on the influence tracks. Ugh. Okay. Do I bid on the Iron Throne or no? I think the answer is no. So we're going to get very low on the turn order. Martell expired a lot of their power to take that. Okay, so they are taking the Iron Throne. That's interesting. Next, we move on to Fiefdom. I'll spend a little bit here, but not too much. Okay, so we can break a bunch of tiebreakers, not all. Lannisters ultimately get the plus one from Valyrian Steel, so let's be careful about that. Uh, though I hope I don't have to fight them anytime soon. And then against the Messengers, I'm going to spend two. And we get at least three stars. We don't get the Messenger Raven anymore. The Baratheons get that, but we do still get to spend um, our best orders. Which is nice. Pretty helpful. Okay, so the Baratheon's gonna get to do their thing. Okay, then we get, um... Put to the sword, the holder of the Valyrian Steel Blade gets to choose one of the following conditions. Defense orders cannot be played, march orders cannot be played, or no restrictions. March plus one has been removed. Okay, so I can't spend all my stars on the stuff I wanted. So this is not necessarily a good spot for, let's say, an attack. 
We probably shouldn't be attacking anyone, because I can't get the most. Um, I'll take that back. We could attack High Garden. The problem is we'll probably get raided. I don't think the Martells are going to do anything but raid me here continually, which is frustrating for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, I, I think I think we'll do a march order and try to take back High Garden. Or do we just leave it for now? You know, maybe we leave it for now. Is he going to raid or defend, do you think? Could we consolidate power? Muster another soldier? We could try to raid him. Hmm. Now maybe we try for the march. Maybe we can take High Garden back. If I do this, I could do support. If they don't raid me, then I'll be able to get some extra strength here. So we'll try for this. You are going to... Raid, probably. This is really good if... Uh, raid special order is really good if you want to get rid of someone's defenses. We could consolidate power and take the risk. As long as Harrenhal doesn't do a raid, we actually get a strength. Same with the Greyjoys over here, though. I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe we try consolidate and hope it works. We're going to try it. King's Landing, I'm going to do a special consolidate because I want to get some extra troops set up over here. Blackwater Bay is going to be on support orders. You're going to be on defense orders. And you... I don't think they're going to attack me from Harrenhal. I just don't see it. So maybe I... Let's see, who's fast first in turn order? I'm the last in turn order, so my raids are the least effective of the bunch. We will still try for a raid order, and maybe we can interrupt something from Harrenhal. No, he's going to disrupt this anyway. There's no point. You know what? No, we're going to do another consolidate. Oh, nope. We're going to do another consolidate. If he raids out of Harrenhal, he can only raid me in one location. So I'll guarantee myself a power. He might get one too, but maybe I get two power out of this arrangement. Having lots of power can be very useful. All right, let's try for this and see what happens. So they are doing a raid over here. Martells are going to be annoying, so supporting out of this ain't going to work. Okay. Uh, looks like we're going to have a hard time attacking here because he wants to do a plus two defense. So he's going to have pretty even power against me. Good amount of strength. Some power being raided away over there. He stole my power. Dang you, Greyjoys. These guys have nothing to raid. Okay. These guys have nothing to raid either. Okay, so nothing, nothing happening more with raids, I think. Nope, take it back. Getting rid of a support. Okay. There's nothing to do up there either. Okay, so out of land of support, you guys are going to go defend in River Run. You guys are going to go and attack the Boltons again, and take the Fingers for some defense, and the Mountains of the Moon for more supply, which makes sense. This is a pretty dumb fight for you. I'm not really sure why you're doing it. You got some support. Well, you got more support than I thought. Okay. And it looks like you should be able to win, no problem. Okay, but Steel Shanks will defend the unit, so no problem. After combat, you may return a house card to your discard pile by paying power equal to the combat. I wonder if he's actually going to take use of that or not. Okay, so the Baratheons just stole a castle, which is going to make them a pretty big target. I'm still the largest target, though, because I have the most castles, and that scares people. The Greyjoys moving into my territory, I do not like, because that means they'll be able to use defense against me pretty consistently. So, do we attack this or not? Do we say this is a dumb idea or not? We could use... If, if, as long as he doesn't use... Um, you're on, we could win. It would at least be an even fight if we only sent over the castle, or the tower, but then we wouldn't be able to defend it, which is the most scary. And the Greyjoys might be able to attack Old Town. No, 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 that's not what I meant to do. Uh, Do we take the risk or no? Not if he's going to use that, I don't think we do. I think we just, we just sit back and we scared him, but we're not going to do anything. Yeah, ignore that. We're not we're not interested in doing any orders there, I think. Actually, can I just simply say don't do anything? Yes, I can say don't do anything. We're not going to move. Decided it's not worth the risk. Not here to attack. The Greyjoys attacking me is proving to be very irritating. The Baratheons are getting lots of supply, but not much beyond that. So there's not a whole lot more they can do. Um, in King's Landing... Well, well, go ahead and get the power. In King's Landing, we will muster... My goal with the muster here is to take another siege engine so we can get across into Dragonstone and steal that. Because that could put us in a really strong position. 
All right, now everyone gets to muster in strongholds and castles, because I hold the most castles. I'm going to get the most units out of this. The Wildlings are also about to attack, so let's remember that. I don't have a lot of power to defend, but we are about to get Game of Thrones, which gets me more power too, so that can be pretty good. So how are we going to do this? Let's remember we only have so much supply to go around. I don't think I can even muster in all locations. Extra strength in Dragonstone is unfortunate. Yes, everyone gets to muster before I do. In a way, that's honestly sort of good in that I can see what they're doing. I'm very concerned about Highgarden and not being able to do anything here. I'm going to get a knight upgrade. We're not going to use... We can't use up supply, so there's nothing we can do there. I could place down a new knight here, and I think I might do that. In King's Landing... Another ship is okay, but not crucial. I think I will do another knight here. French uh, Crack Claw Point, I can only upgrade or place down another footman. Although if I do that, won't that put me over my supply? I don't remember. Um, looking for a knight upgrade. Now we have the Game of Thrones. Every player collects uh, power for every crown they control. I will get plus five, which puts me on par with most people, and then the Wildlings are going to attack. So I remember that we want to bid enough to win something good here, if we can win this. I don't know if I want to bid more than three. How good was it? I actually forgot. How much do we think the Martells, or the Lannisters, or the Starks are going to contribute? I'm going to go for four. Okay, I, I could have done three and that would have been fine. So the result is now I can retrieve a house card from my choice. Um, unfortunately, none of these are great. I'll take Willis, I guess. And there's some secret packs going around right now that I do not like. I haven't really bothered interacting much with the AI, and maybe I should do that, but I have not. Martells over here are just consistently proving to be a th uh, thorn in my side. They will continue to raid here. There's nothing I can do in the Reach. We could try for a support order here. They may raid me and prevent me from supporting, but if we attacked from the Reach, we could take this over. But that would leave the Reach vulnerable to other places, so I'm not sure that's the best. I think what we can do in Shipbreaker Bay is use a really good support. And then from King's Landing, we go for our best attack and try to take over Dragonstone. Here in the Reach, we will do a raid and hope maybe we can do something here. Don't know what to do in Old Town. He could technically attack me. Actually, that's a thing. What? Hmm. Do He's probably going to do a raid order from here, isn't he? Okay, so maybe in here we actually want to do defense. I need to hold my castles. I can't afford to risk losing them. Do I think that Hall is going to attack this time? I don't really know. I don't think they're going to do that. They probably will use defense. I'm going to try for a power and hope that the Lannisters don't take it from me. And then in Blackwater Bay, we go for another support. If they attack me, we get plus two defense. Okay, let's try for this. Let's going to see what happens. Okay, so it looks like the Greyjoys are making a move order out of my castle. Could work to my advantage. Could not. So I think we... Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Hang on. Let's see what happens. Okay, the Greyjoys steal a little bit of power from the Starks. Twins has nothing to do. Sure enough... Oh, no. Hall is moving. Okay. Well, I can get a crown, but where are they going to attack? Are they going to attack me in Blackwater, or are they going to move over somewhere else? Are they going to attack me at all? This guy's going to move into the Sea of Dorne. And they're playing a supporting role. Let's see what the Lannisters do. Looks like they want to attack the Greyjoys, actually, which works fine for me. So let's see what they do with this. We can decide whether we want to help or not. I don't see any reason to help. We might... I mean, I don't know. Could we... Could we technically assist the Lannisters and hurt the Greyjoys? Yes, but does that put the Lannisters in a position to hurt me? I don't think we help anyone. Okay, the Lannisters use up their best card. 
Well, that's good for me. It means the Lannisters are weaker, which means Harrenhal actually could be a good place to attack. Baratheon's still doing their thing over here. Bolton's moving a castle back. They're going to go for White Harbor next turn, most likely. Greyjoys, once again, using their extraordinary mobility to uh, move around and attack just rapidly. So it's four versus three. They're going to be playing their best card versus their best card, so that at least gets rid of the Greyjoys' best stuff. Letting... Oh, well, yeah, it's plus five because he has fiefting stuff. This is going to go away. So that means the Greyjoys are going to be a lot weaker unless they can get their cards back somehow. So that's actually pretty big for me because the more they use up their best cards, the better my position. Now, we only have one move order available, so we have to use it, and we're going to go ahead and use it against Dragonstone. Plus eight this is going to be an even fight, but I have a plus two from support. We're going to abandon King's Landing entirely and go for the most even odds we can. Or are we? Let's take a look. Baratheon, you still have Stannis. So I need to use at least a plus two card. We are higher than them on the fiefdom track. So if there's a tie, we would win. Yes, I want to keep King's Landing. Are you kidding me? All right, so nine plus two more. Puts me at 11. Why are we at nine, actually? One, two, three, four, five, seven. I thought it would be eight. I'm not sure why we're at eight, but it's there eight. So, okay, let's see. Um, so he would have to play his, he has to play Stannis, basically, in order to even have a chance. So all I have to do is play a plus one card. And I'll use the Queen of Thorns here. He did not use Stannis. Greyjoys and Lannisters just made a pact, and it's probably against me because they just saw that I took a uh, castle. I'll bet you a lot of people are allying against me right now. I probably should talk to the AIs, but I'm not going to. So we got Dragonstone out, which is good. They left unexpected. So if I can take Harrenhal and my other castle back, we win the game. We need to look for a way to take two castles next turn and see if we can. Okay, so Baratheons and Starks apparently are fighting each other. Stannis card used, Ramsay Bolton card used. I have not yet used my best cards, so that's huge. The Boltons lose a fair bit out of this. Okay. The Boltons are going to go and attack over here. We might be able to win this. We'll see. Black Walder versus Sir, Her uh, Sir Harris Harlaw. Okay, so once again, the Boltons win this. They push the Greyjoys out. They kill a unit. The Greyjoys are actually in a really weak position. They're pulling a unit out, which means I want to attack badly. He probably knows that is the thing. We need to be wary of any extra movements they might do. This is where I wish that we had a higher turn order, because I could use that. Return Ramsay Bolton or return Reek. So he gets to keep bring Reek back into his hand. But he doesn't get Ramsay Bolton back, so that's good. Okay, you're moving into the fingers. You're abandoning the mountains. That's a better defensible position, so that's sensible. Some more mustering going on. The Martells have not yet made their move, and I need to be wary of that. All right, so to start off, Game of Thrones is back, and the strength goes up for the Wildlings. Throne of Blades, whoever holds the Iron Throne, which is the Martells, gets to choose something. Nothing happened. Okay, everyone gets some power, especially me. That's good. And then Web of Lies, no support orders. Now that is scary because it weakens my ability to do anything. Actually, it could be really good now that I think about it. Wait. So, I want to attack Hall somehow. I don't think, yeah, we don't control this sea tile, the narrow sea, so we can't move units over here as easily. I need to spend a turn moving people over into Crackclaw Point with the intention of attacking the Lannisters. Unless I think there's another castle we could attack. Could we attack Storm's End and win? That's currently at four strength. The Martells might support them. Let me take a look at something. So the Martells and the Baratheons aren't necessarily friends. I could commit 8 power here, and then it'll be 4 versus a potent- No, they can't support! Wait, they can't support! Can we go for the win? Oh, can we go for the win? Maybe. I'm going to... place a special raid order on you, so that we might be able to use this to get rid of any defense you plan on doing. We're gonna do a... 
plus one attack from here and sail out of Dragonstone and into Storm's End and try to knock out the Baratheons and take over all of this. Blackwater Bay, there's nothing to do there, honestly. Crackclaw Point. Um, if we took Hall, we would win. Lannisters, what cards you got left? You don't have Jamie, but you do have plus three. If he moves units over here, I'm not going to be able to do much of anything. I don't know. Um, I think we can consolidate here again, to be honest. But we're not supporting, so maybe I want to be careful. I think here we defend. Here we try for an attack and see if we can get him. Here... We don't care if we win this. I think I do a march order to move into Crackclaw in case we need to move some units over here for a future attack. You I'll defend since it's an important area, and you, there's actually nothing to do. We can't consolidate power on the water, so that's irrelevant. So let me think about this for a second. If he attacks me, he can move units out of River Run and into Heron Hall. And with three units, then move and attack Crackclaw Point. That's the reason I'm doing this. And I don't have any defense, so this is scarier. Raid in order to prevent these guys from defending. Move to take this. If we can take Storm's End and High Garden this turn, we win the game. But even if we don't, if we only take one of them, we might be able to move units into Crackclaw Point and defend, or rather be setting up for an attack on Heron Hall next time. All right, this is a bit risky. Let's give it a shot. Once again, yes, these guys are going to be raiding. Martells are just being annoying. Lots of defense orders here. Not much else, though. And no support can work to my advantage. Okay. So to start off, raids going off. Burning up the Greyjoys. Good job. You are going to do nothing. Nope. Okay. Steal power from the Boltons. I don't even know why the Boltons would bother consolidating there. They must have nothing else to do. Nothing to raid. Wait, did I get raided? I did. I lost my power here in Shipbreaker Bay. Okay, so we couldn't get rid of the plus one defense here. It's going to be a more even fight than it was. Scary. Okay, we're getting attacked here. Um, I'm going to have to defend. The question is, do we want to spend much to defend it? Probably not. Losing this is honestly fine. I'm going to use Willis Tyrell to def uh, keep the unit alive. Okay, so we're going to lose, but I'm not going to lose a unit. He wasn't going to kill it anyway. He spent his other best card. You are going to then retreat to Crackclaw Point, so we're set up next turn for an attack. That was an interesting choice on their end. Now I'm over my supply, so if we get a card where we have to reorganize our supply, I could be in trouble. Jon Snow carries the Baratheons to victory against the Greyjoys. I like seeing the Greyjoys suffer. He actually reduced the power of the Wildlings for next time, too. Okay. Over here. They're going to leave and defend in West Summer. That's fine. So, the question is, what do we do next? Do we go for an attack? He's got a plus two here. But no support, which means I got one, two, three, four. If I commit everything, we're here. We can win. I'm pretty sure we're going to win this. I think we can win this. Let me actually, wait, cancel this. Let me first check something. Who has the strongest card? Baratheon has only plus two. Greyjoys have their plus four. They got plus four back? Okay, that scares me because what they could do is win this. Let's see, one, two, three, four versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He plays, he gets up to eight. I need to save my best card to go against his best card. I have both of mine. So I need to win this, ideally without playing more than my plus three. I'm going to commit everything I've got on this one. Because I don't think anyone else is moving into territory that's mine. No, they're not. Okay, so we're going to try for this one. Yes, I want to keep Dragonstone. <laughs> Super important. Nine versus seven. No support. Your strongest card is plus two, so you can get up to a nine. So all I have to do is play is a plus one. I'm going to play Sir John. That's enough. So we're about to take over one more castle. That brings us up to six. Remember, seven wins the game. Okay, so we take that. Now he gets to march somewhere. He's going to the Sea of Dorne. Doesn't matter. The Martells have done nothing so far this game. They've been literally the weakest of all. <laughs> Pathetic. 
I spit on you. Pugh. Once again, just moving around. It's time they did spend power to hold on to some supply. Okay, now it's this. It all comes down to this one. Everything we've got. He can't move. Let me just double check. Greyjoys, do you have any move orders left? Only defense. No one can move into this old town, which means we should commit everything we've got to Highgarden and win the game. Okay, so it's going to be seven versus four. He can play his plus four if he wants. I've got him. I'm going to go ahead and play Mace Tyrell because he's really good. Here we go. He played plus two. I win. That should be it, right? As long as we end this round holding on to all our castles and no one can move into it, we just won the game. Did I just win the Game of Thrones? Might have just won the Game of Thrones. Okay, they retreat. I take High Garden back. Seven castles. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven castles. I win. All right, when you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die. All of you, guess what? You're going to die. <laughs> okay. And there we go. Now, the AI is, of course, limited in its decision-making capabilities. If you increase the difficulty, I'm sure that does make a difference. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit more predictable, sometimes making really stupid choices. The Martells, for example, did absolutely nothing that entire game. But you can imagine that the true glory of this game is in multiplayer, right? Imagine you were playing as the Lannisters and your allies, the Baratheons, betrayed you and stole King's Landing right when you were planning on destroying the Greyjoys. You'd be furious! You might actually even end your friendship, who knows? That's where this game can get really strong, is if you're playing with other, less predictable, and more conniving people, at least I think. The Dance of Dragons expansion, of course, is very good. It's very faithful to the original tabletop. It's a little bit faster paced and more frantic, which can be nice, and we might see some more expansions in the future. Also, Asmodee did release a mobile version of Game of Thrones, so if you don't want to get it on Steam, you can also get it on mobile. There's going to be links for both of those in the description down below if you would like to learn more. In the meantime, though, I think that's it for me, so thank you all very much for watching this video. Thank you again, Asmodee, for sponsoring it. I had a lot of fun, and I'm enjoying my seat on the Iron Throne. If you did enjoy, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notification, notify bell and I will see you guys next time.